Y'all, it's what's for dinner. Gluten-free beef stew with cornbread. Yum, yum. Hi guys, it's Brandy here at Sewing Back. We're in the kitchen for another what's for dinner. And for dinner tonight, we're actually doing a gluten-free meal. Um, it's kind of an old favorite and we're experiencing kind of a mm, cool week for August which is kind of giving us all a taste of fall. And so I wanted to make our gluten-free beef stew. Uh, this is an Instapot meal. So it's, uh, it'll have the taste of an all day cooked meal, but really in about an hour. And I'm gonna also make um, a, one of my cornbreads. I actually mill my own corn uh, to make my own cornmeal. I have my cast iron in the oven, so I'm going to go ahead and start heating up my cast iron because part of that good crust on uh, a, a loaf, or not a loaf, but a pan of cornbread is having a very hot pan. So you want to have that cast iron skillet really, really hot. So what we're going to need, um, you're going to need some cube stew meat, okay? So if you wanted to get a pot roast and cut up yourself, you can. I actually have stew meat. This is about three pounds um, from our cow we bought. And um, while that's going, I have a little bit of oil. Let's see. Yeah, I have a little bit of oil in my Instapot. And I'm gonna plug it up because you're supposed to start out on your saute function. So I want to get that getting hot and okay. So the next other, so you're going to need your meat and you're not a typical beef stew. You would put like flour on that's going to kind of thicken it up. Um, you won't be doing that in this recipe. All you're going to do is you're going to take some black uh, pepper and I'm just going to grind mine. So, and some salt, and you're, all you're going to do is kind of saute your meat, brown it uh, on, this, on this function, and once it's brown, you can turn it off, and we're going to add in the remaining ingredients, and um, then we'll, we'll bring it, we'll, we'll pressure cook it, the stew. So I'm just waiting for this to get hot. So if you're not sure if your oil's hot, you can get a little water on your finger and just flick it. And if it's popping, it's ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this in. Well, it says it's hot, so I haven't got the right time. Now, one of the reasons that you want this heated up is to try to keep the meat from sticking. If you put it in and it wasn't hot and you were trying to saute it or brown up your meat, it's going to stick. And especially if you have a stainless steel pot like I do, I don't have a non-stick pot. Um, if you had a non-stick pot, I guess it wouldn't stick. But if you have the stainless steel version of the Instapot, or you're doing it in a pot on the stove, because you could totally do this in a pot on the stove, um, if you want to just cook it slow and slow on your stove top. That's up to you. Um, it's too late in the day for that, for this, for me. And so this is one of those meals where you can get it in the Instapot and have a meal that tastes like, you know, you slaved over all, all day and it really was just a normal meal. So I'm gonna let this continue to brown up and I'll insert a picture of what it looks like brown and then I'll hop back on and show you how easy it is to throw all this in there and get it going. And so now all you do, you don't take that out, you don't drain it. All you're gonna do is I'm gonna add in my onions, my pepper, My nose is like all itchy because I put that black pepper. I'm actually kind of allergic to it. That's why I typically like white pepper. But some things you need the other. I'm going to put in my carrots, my potatoes, oops. I'm going to add a squash. 
quart of some garlic. This is minced. So to me, one squirt is probably like a clove. So I did two squirts. Okay. Um, now I'm going to put in some of my Italian spice. This is my Tuscan one. I'm just going to kind of give that a little, that was a tablespoon. Um, I'm just going to put in, we don't like a ton of the ro rosemary, is really strong, so um, we like the Italian spice a little bit better, so I put a little bit of the rosemary because it calls, you know, it's pretty traditional. All right, so I've got that. Then I'm going to put in, I don't have quite a cup of red wine, and um, so I'm going to pour in what I have. If you ever get wine like you don't like it, you know, get some of those stoppers and put it in the fridge and use it for your cooking because it'll be good for that. So the recipe called if you do not have or if you don't want to use wine, then I said to use some Worcestershire sauce. So since I didn't have enough of the red wine, I'm doing both. And I would say I'm putting in probably about a third of a cup of Worcestershire sauce. And I've got my little thing here to open up my beef bone broth. I actually made this after Easter. We had a um, prime rib roast that my mother-in-law did. And um, she gave me all the bones and stuff. And so I made... Um, Ooh, nice seal. I made beef bone broth with it, and um, we have enjoyed that. So I'm going to pour, this is a quart size, so that would be like a box if you got some store broth. And I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. I'll probably add an additional cup of water. I always like to do that with my bone broth because there's always like some residual goodness in there. And save my jar. All right, so I've got all that stuff in there. You're supposed to put one bay leaf, but I'm going to wait on that because we got to put our um, tomato paste. Now, I haven't tried it with my tomato powder, and I really don't have that much of it yet. So I'm going to save that. I want to play around with that first before, you know, that's like all we have to eat. So, <laughs> so I'm going to put one, two, three, four tablespoons. And this is a no salt added um, tomato paste I got from Azure. And it's set is seven ounces. So if you got like one of those 3.5, that would be perfect. I didn't have that. I have a case of these, and um, and I can just put this in the refrigerator and use this um, for something else in the future. And now I'm just going to kind of mix all this up, incorporate it, and then. I'll bring the camera overhead so you can kind of see what it looks like. Now, at the very end, when you when it's done cooking, you can uh, put some frozen peas in here. This is why I think I need to dehydrate some frozen peas so I have just peas that I could stuck stick in here when I cook it like this, so it'll all be done at the same time. But I haven't tried that yet with my dehydrator, but that'll have to be one that I do because. I think that would be fantastic. Okay, and I'm gonna put a little more black pepper. Woo. This already looks really pretty. And I'm gonna put some salt, probably put a little more salt because my stock, I didn't put a lot of salt in that. And I'm gonna put in my bay leaf. All right, so let me show you what this looks like. So, if you can see, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Looks like, wow, I could eat that, I could dig that, and there's no flour in it. So, 
Um, if you have a gluten uh, allergy or if you're just trying to go more um, low carb or you're watching blood sugar, whatever the reason, this is so good and um, it tastes great. So let me get my lid. Let's see. All right, so I'm going to put my lid on. The most challenging part of an Instapot, getting the lid on. Okay, got it on. Okay, so let me show you. Hold on one second. Okay, so you want to make sure that you've got it um, closed off for pressure cooking. You're going on mine. I, I don't. I just hit pressure cook. It doesn't have the stew feature on this one. Um, I'm going to take the time down to 30 minutes, and because I'm crazy, we'll do 32. All right, and then um, we're going to hit start and when it's done you can either let it come down to temperature on the slow release or you can do the fast release um that's kind of up to you so while i have this going i need to mill my corn um, for my cornbread and i'll show you how i do that so i have white um den dent corn that I'm going to mill in my whisper mill. I put it on about the medium setting if you have a whisper mill. It is loud. I will probably try to speed this part up. So I've got my freshly milled corn meal, okay, or corn flour. There's nothing in it. It doesn't have your soda, doesn't have baking powder, doesn't have any flour. Um, this is how I make it. It's gluten-free this way. If you want to make it more traditional, like a corn meal you get in the grocery store, you would do one-to-one -one your, your corn flour to your other flour, your all-purpose flour or whatever flour you're using. Um, so I'm going to do two cups of freshly milled corn flour. Alright, and then um, I'm going to put in and get my I need my tablespoon. I'm going to do a tablespoon of salt. I'm using the Redmond's real salt. I am going to do a tablespoon like a heaping tablespoon of baking uh, powder and then I'm going to do like they say like a dash <laughs> I just have some in my little one teaspoon and I just put some in there usually I don't even measure it I just take some out okay um, so I'm going to take I have a whisk and I'm just going to kind of whisk together all my dry ingredients and this is going to be incredibly healthy because I just milled this and it is a non it's like a non-gmo organic corn dent corn so you can't beat that all right I have one of my girls eggs and this is a fresh one from today and I'm gonna put that in my cup I read up I did a video oops that's not got a trash bag we'll put it there um, I read a video because when John and I made quiche last week, we came our, across our first, like, a real bloody egg. And it was from one of my girls who had stopped laying for a little bit when it got hot and started back. And um, what I read is you could have, I, I didn't have to throw it away. You could totally eat it, but I was like, eh, it looked weird and I didn't want to eat it. So... Um, but I didn't know you could. I would have thought you just throw it away. So I've got the one egg going in here. 
I'm going to put in about a third of a cup of oil. Um, this is sunflower oil. I like sunflower oil in my cornbread, but you know, you can do whatever oil it is that you like. That's just one I found that I really like, and I get it up at, um, uh, I want to say it, Valley, Happy Valley Farm. I don't know. Somewhere up in LJ, Georgia, there's this farm. I'll look it up. It's not happy. I can't think of what it's called right now. Um, but they have a Georgia producer who makes this. They also do like pecan oils or pecan oils or pecan oils, whatever however you want to call it. Um, so this is a cup of butter, gourmet buttermilk. This is like one of my favorites. And I start with this to see the consistency and I'm just going to mix this up. Now remember my oven has is, is, uh, been heating up at uh, between, you have to te test your own oven, between 425 and 450. For me, 425 in my oven makes a good uh, cornbread with a nice crust. I've got my pan in there, and it's very seasoned. Um, it's actually a cast iron skillet my grandmother gave me when I got married. Um, pretty proud of that. <laughs> and then um, I have other ones that I've, I think one of them, I, another one I was given, the other ones I bought because I have some bigger ones too. But that one, I'm pretty proud of. And in all honesty, that was plenty, one, the one cup. Um, so that looks good. And I'm fixing to get it in the oven. So let me... Let me show you what it looks like up close. So you can see it kind of looks like um, pancake batter, I guess. Maybe a little thicker. I don't know. To me, it looks like sourdough pancake batter, but um, that's about the consistency you're looking for. See the steam coming off my, I have a little bit of oil in the pan. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour it directly in my oven. And if you're hearing that sizzle, I don't know if you can hear the sizzle, but it's sizzling. That's what you want. That's going to give you such a nice crust on your cornbread. Oh, it smells so good. And this oven is hot. Lord, it's hot. This thing's powerful. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll it back in. Okay, guys, my timer just went off on my cornbread. And that looks pretty good. All right, let me get my pot holder. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off because I forget half the time. Or I'll turn one knob and not both because it has two knobs you have to do. And let's roll that bad boy out. Now that is so pretty. Matter of fact, looks like one side got a little bit more done than the other. I'm finding that some with my oven, so I don't know. I think I'm going to have to start turning things maybe a little bit. All right, so the next thing that I do is um, we still have a couple minutes on the Instapot before it finishes up. And, um, and then we'll put in our peas in it in a couple minutes and it's done. But what I like to do when I pull my cornbread out, I like to get some butter. Okay. All right, so we're gonna see if the cornbread will come out of, oh, out of the pan. That is a beautiful cornbread. And that's how it's done. Not bad looking. All right, this also just got done. 
my vent has went down. So we're going to open it up to see the beef stew. Remember, always open it away from you. And we got to put in our peas. I have some peas I got from Azure. Like I said, I'm going to have to order some of these so I can dehydrate them because if I would have had them dehydrated, I could have already had them in here. So this is going to take just a couple minutes because it's so hot just so, so the peas will cook. But that's your beef stew. And it's gluten free, has no, no flour or anything like that in it. Matter of fact, I think I'll save these peas and I may practice dehydrating these. 